Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It is the time of the week that we do JP's product pick of the week. I'm John Park. You may also call me JP. And here I'm going to pick not one, but two products this week. It's a double feature. It's bonkers. So first of all, whoa, let me grab that camera by the neck. Uh, First of all, gosh, you can see I'm excited. Uh, Let's go to one of the product pages because you're going to want to watch the show from inside of here. And I know it spoils things and goes all out of order, but go there to that URL right there or that QR code to the uh, product ID 4470 because right in there, you're going to get a 50% off discount on this product during the show. Now we have two product picks this week. One of them is this MCP 4728 that's going to be discounted. The other one is going to be the Raspberry Pi Pico, brand new microcontroller board with the RP2040. That one's not going to be on sale, but let's jump straight to it and let you know that we've got a batch in stock right now. So uh, let me not confuse you with that QR code. Let me show you this page right here. Uh, That is probably where you want to go for a moment. Throw some of those in your cart. So we've actually got both the uh, Pico without loose headers for $4, and we've got the Pico with loose headers for $5. The maximum is three per customer. I'm just going to refresh that right now and see. We still have them in stock, so that's great. Go pack them up because this is it for a little while. This is going to sell through all of the stock that Adafruit has. We, we had a big batch of them. We've been uh, selling them off in like groups of 500 as we get them kitted and and bagged and ready to go out. Uh, But this is going to be it for a little while. So if you've been wanting to get a Pico, you've been hearing about the Pico, I'm going to talk about it a bit today so you'll learn more about what is this Pico, 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 Pico. Uh, Go there right now, get yourself three or even six. That's the max you can get uh, if you you use both the uh, loose header and the no header versions of these. Uh, And uh, once you've got those in your cart, Head back over to that page right there because that's where you can watch the show and get that discount. There's the show. There's the discount. $3.75 instead of the usual $7.50. Amazing. Um, But now let's jump back forward back in time to our good friend Lady Ada who's going to tell us all about both of these products. Take it away, Lady Ada. Okay. Another breakout uh, that we have is the MCP... Uh, 4728 looks a lot like the other one because I'm trying to stick to the same STEM IQT form factor. Uh, this is a quad I squared C DAC. So we actually in the store have a mono DAC, a single analog output. This is a four analog output. Um, this isn't fast enough for you to like create like high speed sine waves and like do audio synthesis with. Um, I squared C isn't really fast enough to do that uh, satisfactorily. Um, but that said, you could, you know, fairly quickly, uh, if you use it like at one megahertz I squared C speeds, you could, you know, set all the outputs, uh, you know, four bytes per transaction or so. So you could do maybe, you know, 10 kilohertz or something um, update rate. And uh, what's really neat about this quad I squared C DAC is, uh, first off, it has internal analog reference. So the internal ag- analog reference is 2.048 volts. Um, temperature compensated, and if you want, you can double that to 4.096. And so even if your uh, VCC is 3 volts, or maybe 3.6, and maybe it's 3, or you're running it off a 5-volt system, but it drops down to 4.5, and so you have these, you know, it, the, the voltage, power voltage is not consistent. Um, using these internal references, you can have a very solid analog reference output, which is super nice. And also there is an EEPROM in there. So when you uh, set the analog voltages and then write the EEPROM, which takes a millisecond or two, next time you power up the chip, it'll automatically set those outputs on the pin. So you don't have to like initialize it when it first starts up. It'll come up with the last values that you programmed into the EEPROM, um, which is you know pretty nice um, extra for a quad DAC. So handy if you need something where you're like, oh, I need some reference voltages, or I want to bias something, or I want to get feedback into an op amp or control, uh, not a very fast moving analog signal, and I want four of them. So we've got the new 
RP2040 based boards in. So we're going to start with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, so the Pico is the name of the board and the RP2040 is the name of the chip. Uh, and this is the board we've got. It's a low cost microcontroller board that is designed to run MicroPython and also runs CircuitPython really well. At the time of uh, this video, there's no Arduino core, but the Arduino Foundation says they're going to add a core for it. So that's going to be really cool. You can get it either as a bare board, comes with like no headers. Like you plug it in and you can use it, but it basically only has like a bootloader button, a crystal power supply and LED. It's like really bare bones. Or you can get the version with headers. Um, why would you want headers? You got to plug it into a breadboard so you can wire up LEDs and sensors and potentiometers and screens and all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, you'll have to solder it in yourself. We don't have them pre-soldered, but it's pretty easy work. Um, and if you have a soldering iron, you can get going. So this is the Pico. It's got 40 pins on each side. About a quarter of them are I'm going to zoom in. Just oh, quick. goodness. I wanted to see if you, you can logo. see the little Raspberry Pi logo on there. There you go. Barely. It's, it's lasered on. Um, you've got the Crystal uh, SWD debug port, so you can debug code. Um, the chip itself, which is a dual Cortex M0 Plus, um, with 264 kilobytes of RAM, so tons of RAM. And for flash memory, it's actually all stored on this external flash chip, which is two megabytes. There's a boot select button. Uh, what's cool about this board is when you plug it into USB, if you have the boot select button held down, it'll pop up into a UF2 bootloader, which we love. We've always liked these UF2 bootloaders could just drag and drop new firmware onto them. Um, and then uh, once you've done that, you just uh, unplug and replug it, and it'll pop up in MicroPython, CircuitPython, C code, what have you. Really powerful new chip. We have a lot more details on the website if you want all the specifications. The documentation is great, and on the bottom, you have all the pins labeled. So lots of GPIO, tons of them. Whole thing runs at 3.3 volts. There's three analog inputs, uh, and lots of ground pins, and like a power supply section as well if you want to um, you know, enable or disable the power supply and all that stuff. So this is really cool. We got a bunch of Picos in. If they're out of stock, uh, please sign up. We're getting more and more uh, in every day. Uh, we just have to prep them up, get them barcoded into the shop. Yeah, that's right. So those are our two product uh, picks of the week. And what I'm going to do is go grab them right now from my cabinet of wonders. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's right. It's the double fanfare. Whoever thought they'd hear that. But that's because we've got these two. These are my two product picks of the week. And we have the MCP4728 quad DAC breakout board with Stemma QT connectors. And we've got our best new little friend here, the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's go ahead and talk about these. Let's, uh, let's, do, some, let's do some demos. I think that's the best way to get started. So I've actually got one kind of mega demo. I, I just kept adding things and adding things to it. Um, but I think this will help explain uh, why I'm excited about both of these products. So let me, uh, let's jump over to this camera view. And I'll put a little tiny me up here. Hi. So what you can see here, I've got the quad DAC board positioned right here between these panel meters. And I have it running over its Stemma QT through a breakout cable to this breadboard. Breadboard is plugging that I squared C uh, data, clock, power, and ground into the appropriate pins on my little Raspberry Pi Pico here. You'll also see I've got some uh, other things connected. There's a knob, potentiometer, there's a button, and I've got some NeoPixels on this little strip here. So what I'm doing is everything here is running in circuit Python. And I've just sort of modified some of the sample code that you can get when you get the MCP4728 quad DAC board. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually read this potentiometer and 
turn those values that I read into voltages that are appropriate for the panel meter. Now you'll notice I have a three volt meter here. I don't even know what that one started out life as. This one's a five volt meter. This thing, who even knows? Uh, but I was able to calibrate these using the code for the quad DAC board so that I can send out appropriate values. And what I'm doing is I'm using these to show the sort of relative amount of red, green, blue, and white that are appearing on my NeoPixels. So if you take a look right here, what I'm gonna do is I can cycle among the different uh, meters and therefore the different components of the color with this button. So right now I'm gonna be changing the red component. So you'll see here, as I move this uh, potentiometer, I'm changing that little dial there, which is what the quad DAC is doing, is sending out voltage, analog voltage to that meter, roughly zero to three volts. And at the same time, it's also changing the color of those NeoPixels uh, using, not using the, the DAC at all, right? That's normal uh, CircuitPython stuff that the Pico is doing over a digital pin. Now what I'll do is, let's, let's turn the red all the way down and then I'll hit this button, which allows me to progress to the next uh, meter. And you'll see, as I turn the meter, eventually I'm gonna pick up where that setting was before. Oh, did I miss it? Let's see, where are you? Oh, there it is, okay. <laughs> it took a little lag. This is a slow meter, actually. You can see here, as I wiggle this, it'll, it'll take it a while to catch up. So this is the green component, RGB. So this is the green component here. Let's turn that uh, mostly down. And then I'll progress up to my red meter, or uh, rather blue meter, crank that up, bring that down. And then lastly, I'm gonna go and send just a tiny little bit of uh, low voltage to this uh, meter all the way on the right. Where'd you go? There it is, uh, which is the white component. And I think this should work better the second time through. So let's, let's try this little pickup business again. So it's gonna grab the needle only when we get into that vicinity, there we go. So it's nice and easy, no jumps. You'll notice it doesn't jump values when we switch uh, among these. And then we'll turn this last one all the way down. So something else that I think is really cool about uh, this board, and let me, let me bring up the, uh, the page there again. So that is this MCP4728. Uh, Lady Ada mentioned it in the video that we watched, which is it has this EEPROM storage on it which allows you to store a set of values that you want the DAC to send out. The analog voltage is on those four channels, A, B, C, and D, that it'll send out on startup, which is terrific because otherwise it'll just dump the full five volts that I have running through my reference voltage, which isn't good for some of these meters. So you'll see here, if I unplug my Pico and then provide it power, they're all gonna go to a halfway point that I had set them to, and then this first one jumps to wherever the knob is, and that's just how I coded that to work. So that was all done inside of code. If I take a look here at my CircuitPython sketch, and I can drop this, uh, this view back. Oh, we'll, we'll stay with that, that'll work. So here you'll see, this is the code that I have running on here. I'm importing a bunch of libraries, including analog in, because I wanna read that potentiometer, uh, digital IO, so I can use that button, NeoPixel, there's even a feature here I'm not showing right now, which is I'm sending MIDI notes. So the notes go low to high with each of these, but I didn't uh, wanna set that up because the, uh, the complications with audio right, right now. Um, if you look at this right here, I'm importing the MCP4728 library, which makes it really easy to use this board. And then I'm establishing it as a sensor on the I2C bus. So this, like all of our little Stemma QT form factor boards. It is I squared C and you can chain them uh, to add multiple devices. You can even, I think with this one, I'm not sure, but I, you might be able to do multiples of this one by giving it different uh, addresses on, on the bus, but you can certainly add other peripherals, some of these uh, types of Stemma QT boards that I've shown before. So you can pile them up on that I squared C bus. And once I have that established, I'm doing some things to set up on a NeoPixels, to set up reading my meters. Then I've, I did a little manual calibration. There's actually some, some nice ways to use the voltage reference, different voltage references, uh, different gain amounts to, to do this a little more elegantly. So look at the sample code there. Uh, and then I set my channels right here. This is the initial values where everything is going to that sort of halfway point based on my calibrations. Then I'm reading my knobs. I have that little uh, pickup thing, which keeps the needle from jumping when I go from uh, meter to meter with the knob having moved. And then if you look at uh, 
let's jump down to the meat of it. These are, in each of these uh, states, where we're sending out values. So channel B value, channel A value, that's actually what tells the value to go to. And there I'm using some uh, percentage of my knob amount that I'm reading in. And if you look back up here, uh, I think I have this, let's see, close to the top here. Uh, oh, you know what? I think I, I, I think I have it. There it is. I'm wrong. Uh, write these to EEPROM. So that was the thing that once I got all of this set up here, I'm sending the values that I want. Uh, this write, uh, mcp4728.save settings is going to send those values to the EEPROM, which is really cool. Uh, I, I really like that feature. It made me happy. So that's what the code looks like. Of course, you can take a look at our learn guide. If you jump over to the page here for the product, you can scroll down and there's going to be a learn guide link there. And that's, that's the, uh, the learn guide for this. It runs, this uh, board runs in Arduino and in CircuitPython. And then, like I said, this is kind of a twofer here today because if we take a look again at what we're running, all that's running on this little Pico board. And there's a couple notable things right off the bat. It's $4, which is sort of astonishingly inexpensive for what this thing can do. It's fully featured. It's got a lot of digital I.O. on it. It's got a few analog inputs on it. So it's terrific for projects where you want to use lots of buttons, but you want a very low-cost microcontroller and one that you can code in CircuitPython or MicroPython. As Lady Ada said, Arduino is going to be coming uh, at some point. It's not out yet. Um, and it's got some of these added features like these little state machines, these PIOs, where you can run some code that you're, uh, there isn't a peripheral built onto here, but you can write code that'll run separately from the rest of your code. It's also two cores, so you can have code that's dealing with display updates while you have other code that's doing other clever things. So it's, obviously it's just early days. The stuff I'm doing on here is, is really straightforward and simple. But it's exciting that it just works right out of the box. It's very easy to get it set up. If you take a look at the pages for these, and I'm kind of curious if I refresh this, do we still have them in stock? We do. All right, so jump over to one of these pages and get, get one if you want, because uh, they are still in stock. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's a link to a learn guide here, uh, getting started with Raspberry Pi Pico and CircuitPython. So that is one way to get started, and this will talk you through how some of the setup works, and then you can start using sample code. Pretty much be able to use all the libraries that you've grown to love from Adafruit for uh, a lot of these devices, as well as from the whole community in CircuitPython, anyone who's creating devices and, and uh, libraries for it, that, sh that stuff should just work. Um, and you can also head on over to Raspberry Pi Foundation's website, it's raspberrypi.org, and Take a look at the Pico documentation there, including a downloadable PDF for getting started in MicroPython on the Pico. So those are all some really exciting things that you can do with both of these new products. So as I, uh, let me jump back to those pages. I forgot to show them to you. Where'd you go, little pages? There they are. Uh, here is that Pico page, and there's the other Pico page. If you scroll down in those, you'll get to this getting started guide, and that'll uh, get you off and running. And setup is very easy. It's uh, essentially hold the boot letter button, press, uh, uh, plug in the USB. It'll show up as a USB drive, and then you can drag the latest UF2 file with CircuitPython right on there. And from there out, you're, you're cruising just like you're in a regular CircuitPython board, because it is one. Uh, let's see. Is that it? I think that's it. Uh, let me know if there's any questions in the chats. Uh, I see... We have one very um, hilarious question from our good friend Todd Bot. He says, but how do I install Linux on the Pico? This is a really uh, important thing to understand, and it's obviously a piece of uh, education that's going to have to happen for people because we're so used to thinking of Raspberry Pi as a company who makes an educational single board computer that runs Linux. This is a microcontroller. It's not going to run an operating system like Linux, at least not unless people get kooky with it, but it is a microcontroller just like any Arduino board, any feather, feather board, any Teensy, any Trinket. That's the, the type of mind frame you should be in as far as what the Pico is and what it isn't. Uh, and I can't wait to see the kind of stuff that people do with it. So those are my two product picks for the week. Go get some. You can, you can I think, buy up to 10 of these 
uh, DAC boards if you have a big, big plan and you'll get it for half off. And right now you can get three each of the two different Picos that we stock. And I think that's going to do it. So let me know if anyone else has any questions over in the chats. I can take a look over at uh, YouTube for a moment. Oh, lots of talk there. Uh, yeah, and this is a good point. Uh, Tim Orling says, very much looking forward to the Feather. There is a Feather board coming that's going to use this chip. There is an Itsy Bitsy coming that's going to use this chip. There are boards from all sorts of familiar friends of ours in this space, including Spark Fun and Pi Maroni. So take a look out there. You're going to see there's a lot of boards that are going to use this uh, exciting new chip. And, uh, and we can't wait to see what people do with it. Oh, someone says they want to do a uh, Kerbal Space Program controller. That's uh, AKA Soggy Buns with a Z. Yeah, you go, AKA Soggy Buns. That's, that's, that's right. This is perfect for doing controllers because of the amount of a- uh, I.O. that you have on it and the low, low cost. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, I want to thank you all for stopping by. Go pick up some boards if you want and uh, have a great day. I'm going to see you on Thursday for John Park's workshop, and then I'll see you again next Tuesday for a new JP's product pick of the week. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and that's going to do it. Bye-bye. One more time, this time with audio, I've tricked myself and you get to see the behind the scenes because I need this for later. So those are my product picks of the week. It's the MCP4728 Quad DAC Breakout Board with Stemma QT and it's the Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040. I'm going to go ahead and put those on my Stemma QT board of goodness. Bye-bye.